1981 there were stories of a new exotic disease. Several newspapers ran stories on it and the initial first cases were a cluster of intravenous drug users and men who had intercourse with other men. They all showed signs of an impaired immunity and had symptoms of a rare opportunistic infection, which normally was only known to occur in people with very compromised immune systems. These first few months this disease had no name, but as you might have guessed, in 1982 they start calling it AIDS. This video will cover all the ins and outs on HIV and AIDS. We will cover what HIV and AIDS are, we will cover some treatment options, the symptoms, some tips and tricks and much much more. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. For those of you who are meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you, my viewers. Because educated people make healthier decisions, which is the whole point of this video and this entire YouTube channel. This video also comes with a quick disclaimer, it's meant purely informative, this is not medical advice and when looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. And now quickly, let's get started. So as promised, I will start this video by explaining exactly what HIV and AIDS are. And the easiest way to do so is by googling it. So let's start there. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, which is a chronic, potentially life-threatening condition caused by the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. By damaging your immune system, HIV interferes with your body's ability to fight infections and diseases. So in a nutshell, AIDS is caused by the HIV virus, the human immunodeficiency virus. And this is a special form of virus called a retrovirus. It primarily infects cells of the immune system, most notably T helper cells, also known as CD4 positive cells. And these cells play a crucial role in directing and enhancing the activities of the whole immune system. Now, an infection with HIV has three main stages. An acute infection, clinical latency and ultimately AIDS. As the name already suggests, the acute infection starts after someone is infected with HIV. As mentioned, the HIV virus will then infect this person's immune cells and will integrate its own genetic material into its host cells. During this phase, 40 to 90% of patients will develop flu-like symptoms two to four weeks after being infected. They may experience a fever, nausea, vomiting, a rash, headaches, tiredness, sores of the mouth and genitals, and swollen lymph nodes. Unfortunately, these are very non-specific symptoms, which can and could be caused by many different diseases. Therefore, they are not often recognized as symptoms of an HIV infection. After these initial symptoms, the virus will become latent. A phase where the virus is inactive, does not cause any symptoms and remains undetected in your body. This stage can last 3 to 20 years, averagely lasting about 8. Near the end of this stage, many people may start to experience symptoms like a fever, weight loss, gastrointestinal problems and muscle pains. And about 50 to 70% of people may develop non-painful but swollen lymph nodes. Ultimately, this will develop into AIDS. At this point, the HIV virus damaged someone's immune system severely, which will lead to very low levels of multiple immune cells, most notably the CD4 positive cells. This is what decreases someone's immune response to the point where patients will start to develop opportunistic infections caused by bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites that can normally cause an infection in people with a healthy immune system. These opportunistic infections can cause pneumonia, meningitis, chronic diarrhea, infections of all organs in your body and ultimately AIDS can cause several types of cancer. Which brings us to the important question, how is HIV transmitted? And there are three main ways. By sexual contact, by significant exposure to infected fluids and tissues, mainly blood, breast milk, semen or vaginal secretion. And lastly, it can be transmitted from a mother to a child during pregnancy, delivery or breastfeeding. Just to be clear, HIV can be transmitted via feces, 
nasal secretion, saliva, sputum, sweat, tears, urine or vomit. And therefore it cannot be transmitted through normal day-to-day -day contact, like kissing, hugging or sharing objects or food. Which brings us to the question, how common is an HIV infection? And according to the World Health Organization, HIV is a global pandemic. As about 36.7 million people worldwide had HIV in 2016. On the plus side, the number of new infections is decreasing each year. From about 3.1 million new infections in 2002 to about 1.8 million new infections in 2017. Which brings us to the prognosis of an HIV infection. And as you might have expected from the severity of its symptoms, the prognosis can be very bad. Unfortunately, an HIV infection can be very deadly. Without treatment, the average survival with HIV is about 9 to 11 years. And after the diagnosis of AIDS, the survival drops between 6 to 19 months. However, if proper treatment is started and if it's followed adequately, the life expectancy of a newly diagnosed adult with HIV rises to about 20 to 50 years. This is why the prevention of HIV, early diagnosis and starting of proper treatment are so important. Now before we continue this video with more useful information on when to visit your doctor, some tips and tricks and a possible treatment plan, I want to ask you to leave a like to the video if you're finding it valuable. Furthermore, also consider subscribing to the channel for more weekly awesome medical video. Thank you and let's continue. Now then, when should you visit your doctor? It could be necessary to visit your doctor in the following cases. If you're experiencing any of the previously mentioned symptoms, if you had unprotected anal or vaginal intercourse, if you have another STI, if you shared a contaminated needle or syringe, and if you received an unsafe or unsterile injection, blood transfusion or medical procedure, such as a piercing or an accidental needle stick injury. If you do visit your doctor, he or she can help you to find out the extent of your symptoms, diagnose the possible underlying medical condition, provide you with tips and tricks and if needed, set up a treatment plan. Your doctor might do this by asking about your medical history, your current symptoms, the medication you're using and afterwards, your doctor might do a physical examination and some blood tests, as HIV can be diagnosed through rapid diagnostic tests. And if necessary, your doctor could then refer you to medical specialists to start proper treatment. Which brings us to some tips and tricks. These can be useful to prevent an HIV infection or can increase the quality of life for those of you that already have an HIV infection. Use a condom. Test for HIV or other STIs after high-risk behavior. Prevent infections and other illnesses, as HIV makes your immune system less effective. You can do this by washing your hands frequently, staying away from sick people and remaining up to date on all your vaccinations. Follow your doctor's orders about your prescriptions. It's crucial to take HIV medication exactly as prescribed by your doctor. Skipping even one day of medication can give the virus an opportunity to become resistant. Stay in the best shape possible, physically but also mentally. Do so by having a structured sleeping schedule. Sleep about 7-9 to nine hours each night and make sure you have a balanced diet. Drink about 2 liters of water each day. Exercise at least 2.5 hours each week. Keep close contact with friends and or family. Don't abuse drugs or alcohol and quit smoking if you can. Which brings us to some possible treatment options for HIV. And here I want to mention that unfortunately there isn't a cure yet, nor is there an effective vaccine. Treatment is therefore aimed at suppressing HIV and its replication. This allows a patient's immune system to recover, strengthen and regain the capacity to fight off opportunistic infections. Current treatment plans are all composed of a combination of three or more antiretroviral drugs. Therefore, this treatment is called ART, antiretroviral therapy. And with this treatment, most people can get the virus under control in about six months. Starting this treatment is recommended for nearly all people with HIV, regardless of how long they have had the virus or how healthy they are. Delaying treatment will only lead to further decline of your immune system potentially causing serious health problems. 
Art can make the viral load so low that a test can't detect it anymore. This is called an undetectable viral load. This is a sign that the treatment is working. And getting and keeping an undetectable viral load is the best way to stay healthy and protect others. And the way to achieve this is by taking your treatment as prescribed. If you skip your medication, even now and then, you're giving HIV the chance to rapidly multiply. This could weaken your immune system and therefore you could become sick. Here it is important to know that art is no walk in the park and it can cause some serious side effects. Most commonly it might cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, difficulty sleeping, a dry mouth, headache, a rash, dizziness, fatigue and pain. Therefore always discuss all your treatment options and your side effects with your personal doctor. He or she can determine what the best possible plan is for you. Now I hope this video on HIV and AIDS was helpful, but if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below. For those of you that want to keep on learning, also check out the playlist in the description with more awesome medical videos. Because educated people make healthier decisions, which is the whole point of this YouTube channel. Now if you did learn something, I would appreciate it if you would leave a like, this will help out the channel tremendously and consider subscribing. I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you and by clicking that button you can also help me to reach my subscriber milestone. Thank you all for watching, especially thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you Sebastian who is an Investor T supporter and as always I will see you next week with a new video. Bye bye.